Hi, and welcome to Psychic Sushi. I'm Reverend Elizabeth Howell, and we have a very special guest today on my show. We have Marianne Winkowski, and she is very well known by everybody. So we have a big studio audience today that wants to, to visit with Marianne, and they're on the edges of their seats right now. Um, but those are people who are not familiar with Marianne. Marianne works as a ghost, um, how would you describe your work, ghost? Paranormal investigator. A paranormal investigator. The show made it a ghost whisper. The show. And ooh, what show were we talking about? Yo, I don't know. Jennifer Love Hewitt, maybe. See the resemblance? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, the show, The Ghost Whisper. And, uh, but paranormal investigator. And right. you've been doing this for how many years now? Oh, I don't want to back uh, into it's, a corner. It's a long time. Yeah. A really, a really long time. Well, it, it yes. And well, my grandmother started taking me to funerals when I was four, so it's been a long time. And, and a lifetime. Let me, let's right. say a lifetime of it. Yes. And, and we would like to know more about how you got started in this. How did you, um, you know, begin? You said at four years old, your grandmother's taking you to funerals. funerals and your right. grandmother, she could see? You know, it's she odd. Sensed? It's, uh, grandma was from the old country, from Italy. And if mm -hmm. some paisan or goomba or somebody died back then, they were living here and she would get a funny feeling and I think anybody that 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 in the pit of your stomach or your hair goes up mm -hmm. so that night she would see who died over in the old country and you know 60 70 years ago when somebody died like that by the time they laid him in the parlor and they took a picture of it and they mailed it to America it would be six or seven weeks before somebody knew that somebody died back then Right. And, I mean, we jump on a cell phone now, who cares, you know, but, and back then when, like the Italians, there, there were pockets of Italian, Irish, Polish, German people all over, mm -hmm. you know, Cleveland, and so Grandma would get up in the morning and go across the street and say, um, hey, Rose, your brother Luigi died last night, and in six or seven weeks, the, the picture would come, there's Luigi. Oh. So when my mother went to the hospital to have my sister Diane, you know, it wasn't a drive-through like it is now. A woman went to the hospital for a week to have a baby. And um, husbands didn't get off from work. So on the way to the hospital, they dropped me off at Grandma's. And sometime during that week, somebody died. And there's 26 months between me and my sister. So I was pretty little. And mm -hmm. Grandma's got up the, one morning, she fed me breakfast, put me outside, or out in the sunroom to play, and they didn't speak English, they only spoke Italian. So I'm talking to somebody in Italian in this room, and she's standing there listening. And you know, kids are good. Kids can hear all kinds of things they're not supposed to hear. So she thought that I overheard her telling Pa, uh, Grandpa, about who had died. and. She's listening, and she says, Marianne, who are you talking to? And I told her. She goes, where is he? And I pointed to him. Then she goes, well, ask him this, then ask him that. And <laughs> how would I know this stuff? I'm a baby. So she realized I could see and talk to spirits when I was little. Mm. What she didn't realize is all kids can, but that's another story. So well, about four, she started taking me to funerals because everybody attends their funeral. Yeah. And the spirit is always there. And so I was the special granddaughter that could see and talk to the paisan or the kumba that died. And oh, my cheeks pinched constantly, <laughs> constantly. And I just, I was seven when I actually realized I knew more than grandma. But you don't tell that to Grandma. And no, <laughs> no. And um, you know, I think when you keep using something, you develop m more and more. Yeah. With kids, you know, mothers and parents and grandparents are way smarter now than they were when we were kids. Yeah. You know, when we were little, the kids, you know, oh, there's nothing in your closet. There's nothing under your bed. You're a big boy. Don't talk about that. You need to listen to your kids. And mm -hmm. parents listen to their kids now, which is really a good thing. Yeah. Because kids are really spot on. Yeah, and they're open. Yeah, they yeah. are. And it's not just earthbound spirits. They see angels and guardian angels and spirit guides. Kids are good. Yeah. And uh, 
So it, and it just developed from there. It was, uh, gosh, Ted and I are married 43 years now, and we were married for two years before I ever told him I could do this, because I didn't want him to think he was married to a nut. So, and the first thing he asked me after I told him, he wanted me to wiggle my nose like Elizabeth Montgomery and Bewitched. It's like, yeah, you didn't hear what I did there, kid. So. But. Well, so, so you got started, and you say that you see. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it, so to describe to someone who's like, oh, well, you just says she sees. You see as in like clairvoyantly or like a picture? You see like a, or like I a... I see just like I see you. Just like, just like you see a regular person. A regular person. You see them that... And I, and I, and I know <clears throat> some people see mists or little right. tornadoes or fog, and no, I see them just like I would see you. The only difference mm -hmm. would be I see hair color, eye color, the clothes they have on, if I squinted, if you were an mm -hmm. earthbound spirit and I squinted, I could see the couch through you. Okay. Okay. You're so not, you pretty... wouldn't be solid. Right. But I can tell the difference, but right. they just look like a regular person. Mm -hmm. And it's the movies. The body is what's mangled, bloody, or gory. The spirit's always whole. Right. I have never seen a ghost carrying their head or missing parts or pieces. <laughs> well, that's comforting. It does to know. not happen. That's, that does not know. happen. Right. So. Yeah. Now, so, so you say you see them like, and so does that make it difficult to go grocery shopping or to go around? You know, no, because unless I stare at them or wink at them, they don't know I can see them. Ah. Why would they know? And. And I mind my own business. Okay. I don't, it, it's a rule. My family and my friends know it. If you don't ask me, I don't tell you. Right. It is none of my business. Don't ask, don't tell. That's right. <laughs> so, and I'd like leave. That. Now, if you had a ghost in your house and you, that was messing with your kids or mm -hmm. picking on your animals, no, I would say something. There's a limit to where I keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Like more of a poltergeist or more of an, a, an aggressive, uh, he, nasty right, right. ghost. The Middleburg Heights show. Ted, when he worked, he's retired now, but when he worked, he uh, would like to go to the show in the afternoons. And he likes all that 20 minutes of stuff before the show, so we would get there early. And for those of you that know that show, the trash can is behind the first row of seats. So when we walked in, there was a ghost standing right there by those trash cans. And I just walked by and we sat down and we're eating our popcorn, and in walks a young couple, and the guy was carrying a bag of popcorn, and this ghost stepped out and went at the bottom of the popcorn bag, and the popcorn went shooting out all over. And what's, what'd they trip on? They're looking on the floor, what did they trip on, you know? Hmm. And I'm looking at him, I'm thinking, yeah, okay. Let it go. Oh, yeah, let it go. So the next couple of people came in, didn't have popcorn. Then a family came in with two boys, about a 10 year old and about an 8 year old. And they had the family bucket of popcorn. And they let the little guy carry it. He was so proud carrying that bucket uh -huh. of popcorn. And I'm going, oh, no. Sure enough, as soon as that, that family passed that, he hit the bottom of that popcorn and popcorn went flying everywhere. And then the father hits him up the side of the head and goes, you know how expensive that was? I'm going, oh, that's enough. And I looked over to him and I went, hey! And he looked at me and went right out the door. Oh, well, there we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. So, oh. no, I usually mind my own business. Yeah. Now, now that's got to be, no, obviously it's not difficult, then you've adjusted, it's become something pretty, pretty normal and, yeah. and you can function, it's not making you, you know, no. staying grounded with it. Right. Yeah. It was weird because somebody would call me up and they'd say they had, you know, they, they thought they had a ghost in their house. And it was, um, and, I, and I wouldn't know, I'd have to drive to their house and see. And we lived in Worcester for 20 some years. And so, and I had like a real business. I, I groomed animals for 20 years, I had a grooming shop and a diaper service. And I just had. Oh, Worcester. Yeah, yeah, I just had my own little thing going on down there. And very little of this that I do, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was all for relatives or f friends of friends, okay? Right. Well, it got a little bit spread out and you know one people tell two people and two people tell four people and whatever so 
I would wait until there were like maybe three or four houses for me to do up there so that I wouldn't have to run up to Cleveland just for one house. And I went to, it, it was February. Drove up there and I had a foster baby with me because we were foster too. And went to the first house. They didn't have a ghost. And she goes, are you sure I don't have a ghost? I says, yeah, there's nothing here. The house mm -hmm. is clear. This is good. She goes, all right. Went to the second house. She didn't have a ghost. She goes, oh, yes, I do. I know I do. And I'm going, well, maybe you have one that crossed over that I can't see, and that's a good one, so don't worry about it, because mm -hmm. I only see earthbound spirits. Okay. Went to the third house. She didn't have one, and she was just plain nasty. She says, I want one. Call me one. Get me one. <laughs> I don't even know how to call a ghost. I said, oh yeah, all right. So mm -hmm. on the way back down to Worcester, I got caught in this freaky snowstorm in February. It was just a bad day. I just, Ted was home from work, the girl, ah, it was just a bad day. So I went to bed that night and I'm saying my prayers and I got done and I said, oh, by the way, God, if you want me to keep doing this, you better come up with plan B, because this isn't working. <laughs> and Ted was happy when I told him I wasn't going to do this anymore, because he never knew where I was. You know, I'm in strangers' houses. So it was about a month later, and I was back in the grooming shop. I had just finished grooming a schnauzer, and it was in the crate waiting for the owner to come pick it up. I had a port play pit out there, and the baby was sleeping. And the phone rang, and this lady said, Marianne, and I said, yes. She goes, uh, can you help me? I didn't know if it was children's <laughs> services or some dog got skunked or what it was, okay? <laughs> so, and I had to be careful. Wayne County is very, very... Conservative. Yeah. So I had to be very <laughs> careful, okay? And oh, no. I said, how? And she says, well, I have a ghost in my house. I went, mm. You do? Why? And so she started going off about why she thought she had a ghost in her house. Well, while we're talking, I see purple or peacock feathers in a, in a purple vase. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm not a psychic. I'm not, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. So she gets done and she said, so? And I really didn't hear a word she said because I was trying to figure out about these peacock feathers. And I said, hey, let me ask you something. I said, do you have peacock feathers like in a purple-blue vase? She goes, yeah. She said, so what do you think? I'm going, wow. So I asked her another question, and then I see this gray mantle fireplace. But the mantle wasn't straight across. There were like three of them, like slanted on a slant. And on one of them was, if you had a second grader that made a tree, the brown trunk and the great big green ball. Well, in the green ball were these little tiny pictures, like a family tree. Mm. And so she got through talking again, and I said, do you have? And I explained that. She goes, yeah, I do. She says, my father-in-law made that. She said, isn't that just about butt ugly? <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, actually it is. But <laughs> And then she goes, how do you know that? I says, I don't know. <laughs> I says, but I think I need to come to your house. She had a ghost. So now, if I can see the inside of your house, I know you have something in your house. Ah, oh, so they give you a clue that by because you were able to see inside, there's a ghost there. Right. So Plan B. That was that my was choice. That was their choice. Yeah. But it's funny because I have people that'll take a business card and won't call me till they clean their house. <laughs> because they're afraid I'm going to see if their house is dirty or not. <laughs> That's cute. That's good. Which I can usually tell. Yeah. So. <laughs> she, she wouldn't want to see my house. <laughs> the, um, <clears throat> but that's interesting. I mean, that, that is, so you got into, and you said, hey, and you opened up, and you, now you see, and you, you can see also into people's homes. Now, when someone calls you, most of the time people call you because they, okay, I have a ghost in my house, or I have some paranormal activity, it can't be explained, you know, the, something's happening, and I need help, and I don't know who to call, mm -hmm. so, you know, the, you know, so they call you. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> now, when, once you establish, established, okay, there's a ghost, then what's the next step, or what do you do then? I give people options. The mm -hmm. two things that I 
tell people to do, first of all, is if you are affiliated with any kind of organized religion, have the house blessed. It's a really good thing to have an ordained priest or minister come in and bless the house. Do not get your hands on holy water, though, and start throwing holy water around, because mm -hmm. that's going to really tick off a ghost. It's okay if an ordained priest or minister does it. It's another thing if a lay person does it. The other thing that I tell people to do is use a smudge stick. Smudge sticks really do work. They may not get rid of an earthbound spirit in the house, but they will make them very lethargic, very laid back, and if you're persistent and you smudge every two and a half or three weeks, if the ghost hasn't been there very mm -hmm. long, they will leave, or at least you can keep them in that lethargic state and the house will be better. Oh, well, that's kind of, you know, that's, pill, that's a pill for a ghost. There. That's right, <laughs> and those are, you know, <laughs> and it's, you know, and it works, you know, you don't okay. always have to have somebody come in and clear something right. out. So then, and then, or or now, then, then other step though is that you would you would clear the ghost out, right? Yourself. Then they invite me to come out, mm -hmm. and then when I come out to somebody's house, I talk to them and I find out. Well, anything the homeowner asks me, I'll try to get an answer for them. Mm -hmm. Anything the ghost tells me, I will tell them, and then I create the white light that they okay. lost after their funeral, and I watch them walk into it. And mm -hmm. When I can't see them anymore, they're where they're supposed to be. So you get them, you move them into the light. That's you right. Them, so they're not stuck anymore because this you only see this you see the stuck ones. That's right. And you move them into the light. Right. So you clean that up. Exactly. And um, and then I know that you had come out. I used to run a, a, a nonprofit center here in the Brunswick Medina area, and you mm -hmm. came out because I needed you to come out and clean up. I had been going through. I was ill, and I was like I couldn't stand the energy anymore. And you came mm -hmm. out and. Um, you didn't spend very long. You were able to kind of get everything moved, and um, you also placed um, some seeds or quince something, seeds. quince seeds, and uh, you, you on the windows. Nope, just any the, door that goes directly to the outside. Door. I, actually, uh, you did put them on the w couple windows too, because you okay. felt that they were. <laughs> okay. Because you felt this really weird case, energy might have come. Well, coming I think through those. because of the center doing the kind of energy work it yeah. did, I thought that would probably be a good yeah. idea. So you, yeah. You did that. And that that you know that that's a um, interesting thing. So you so you kind of seal it out then, so people, the energies don't come back in for people. You know the thing is this: if somebody and and this is my job. There's a fee for that. Yeah. So I, and I don't expect. I mean, what's to stop me coming out, clearing out what's in your house, getting in my car and leaving, and the ghost from next door moves over? Yeah, that's crazy. You know. So if you protect the house, right? So this never happens right. again. I don't really see people a second time. Yeah. You know, once is once, once will do. Is, once is enough. Once is yeah, done. Yeah, exactly. So have you ever had people that um, said, you know, I want to keep my ghost? Yes, I have. Does that does that <laughs> irritate you? <laughs> yes, it <Yeah>. does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and what I will do is this, and I'll tell. And, and right mm -hmm. now, none of you, if you die and you decide to, to lose your light and stick around and give somebody grief, which <laughs> I wouldn't recommend, all you have to do is go to a funeral home that has a service going on. And that bright white light that is next to that person is not an individual light. That's a universal light. And... All you have to do is go bebop it into that light, and you'll be where you need to be. So nobody will ever be stuck. So if somebody has me out to do this, mm -hmm. and they say, well, you know, I decided I want to keep my ghost, because I don't have to talk out loud. Mm -hmm. I won't make the white light, and I won't remove, you know, I will mm -hmm. not make it for the ghost, because it's your house. But I will tell that ghost how they can cross over on their own. Ah, oh, okay. And if they leave, it was their choice, right? Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I mean, and that that's, you know, we've talked a, a few times, we've had a few guests, and we do talk about, um, you know, that's the hum humanity aspect of the ghost, is that there's someone who, that's someone's brother, sister, that's someone's family member, and they're stuck. And well, we, they can't go forward. They can't right. go spiritually forward. I mean, they are... When I run across a spirit, if he was mm -hmm. 50 years old and died in 1925, he's still 50 years old. Mm -hmm. He has not aged. He hasn't gotten shorter, taller, skinnier, nothing. He stays identically <laughs> the same. And one could only hope. And <laughs> so 
and, and a lot of times they stay for a specific reason, but most of the time it's like, you know what, it was such a mistake for me to stay. I really should have yeah. crossed over. They really are sorry that they didn't. Hmm. Well, that, that's, a, a, that's wonderful work that you're doing, and you've been well known for this. You've been on every possible, uh, let's see, you've been on, well, in the Cleveland area, Morning Exchange, and you've been on uh, all, every radio station. You were just, weren't you just currently on? Uh, um, uh, good Company. Well, Good Company. I'm on there I'm, twice a month. <clears throat> okay, you're on twice a month on Good Company, but um, I'm thinking of the national Radio Larry show. King. Larry King, that's it. Yeah, Sorry. I was on Larry <coughs> King. I Larry was on King. with Jason from The Plumber from The Ghost Hunters. Ah, and, and, and so you got to kind of talk a little bit with them. Yeah, so you've been we on did. Some, and you've been on well, Coast to Coast as well, right? Yes, a lot. Coast to Coast yeah. a lot. Yeah. And, and so, so you've been all over. So we have a local person who made it big, celebrity-wise, we'd say. And, and that's great. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm so glad to have you on the show. Um, you know, and so people, you know, you know, they want to know maybe where to get, you have a website. I do. And, um, and you also, but, but someone can go to a Borders or a Booksellers or Joe Beth or wherever, and Amazon or whatever, and they can get your books. And you have several books. I do. Um, that are out there, and, and they're very popular books. And um, you have, well, I know this one I have is out of print. Um, right. That was my last self-published book. Yeah, and, and hang on to it because if you or if you got one of these at home, they're going for one hundred and ninety nine dollars on eBay. Wow. Yeah, I know. If I'd known that, I would have kept like <laughs> three cases. I would have kept if I had known that. Right. And and um, I actually I got this at the Purple Lotus. So yeah, okay. She had it, so I will um, hang on to that. Yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. So. Um, great, and I mean it's a fabulous book, and, and so you in your so the titles of your ne couple of books would the be the next the next one that is nonfiction is when ghosts speak, when and, ghosts speak, and that okay. one is now in paperback. All right. So and um, that that's that's what, right. Fiction and nonfiction. You also have a fiction. You you love to write. Yeah, fiction and, series. And out. Uh, so you know you you're a prolific writer you like to write as well as go in out my spare and, time. And, and spare and and that's creative and wonderful and you also have a cookbook correct well coming out coming out coming out yeah I, and it, that's that's called um beyond delicious beyond delicious there's a hundred recipes and every one of the recipes is from a ghost oh interesting i want to see somebody else come up with that one i i <laughs> I would I would say that that would be yeah mm -hmm. difficult but yeah. um, awesome that so yeah. that's that's going to be coming out so people can go to your website and um, the website would be MarianneWinkowski.com. okay so Marianne Winkowski we will we'll put that in so okay. people can catch that and also link it so people can go to the website because very informative the website talks a little bit about all the different things you're doing and updates people but you also do um, you know you just did an energy workshop and it was called a negative energy removal workshop and um, just really quickly can you just describe because you'll be doing more workshops but into next year or so right but negative energy people what is negative energy and what why would it be, you know, would it be negative remote? energy a curse um, and there's a lot of people that don't believe in that but if I said to you do you think the Kennedys are cursed oh well yeah the Kennedys are cursed yeah they can't be the only ones in the world that are cursed but anybody that has any kind of European ties, you know, the Italians have the Maloic, the Greeks have the evil eye. There's not a nationality that does not right. have negative energy. There was a little lady in the village that could put it on and take it off. Okay, that's and cool. <laughs> so that was something that I was taught. And because I was taught that, I teach it. Okay, from, from old world kind of That's standpoint. right, that's right. So it would be a, an energy... Well, it, it teaches you how to tell if a person, place, or a thing has a curse on them. Oh, okay. And I go around for a couple of weeks before a workshop and buy items that are cursed. Wow. And it's hands-on. You touch it, you feel it, and you take it off. You're, that's what you learn. Interesting. And so it's not like using... Is it like the power of prayer or just positive thinking or are you teaching a technique of... It's a, te it's a technique. Interesting. I've got two people coming in from Africa, one from Australia, and two from Japan for this next coming workshop. Well, they I would say that, yeah, off. wow. I would say that that would be a, an interesting workshop. To, to, so you can go to your website and wait 
for the information for next year. But right. I think that's a really fascinating aspect because I know a lot of people, you know, I work as a reader and people do come in and say to me, you know, oh, I think I've been cursed or, or that type of thing or they're concerned about curses. And um, so I would think that that would be a wonderful thing to learn just if you're concerned Plus about that. readers, anybody, Reiki, anybody that's hands-on where you are touching yeah. somebody or they're touching your cards to shuffle. Yeah. This is stuff that has to be cleared or cleaned, and most people don't realize that that has to be done on a fairly regular basis. Right. Because it's going to affect your readings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you. Yeah. If you don't. Yeah, I, I smudge all right. the time. I have liquid smudge, but that's my right. thing. Right. And everybody, you know, yeah. has what works for them. But, and but it's just, it's a, it's a good thing to know how to do. I, I think so. I'm, that's yeah. why I'm like, wow, that's an interesting, because I do, you know, I, I agree with you, the people, um, you know, as long as there's positive energy and there's negative energy. There is. And, um, you know, uh, that's, so this is a technique your grandmother taught you? Well, yes, it is, actually. But I was so fortunate, again, living and growing up in the Cleveland area, mm -hmm. Because I still had a bunch of girlfriends or relatives that still knew Aunt Sophie from Poland and, uh. you know, Aunt Helen from Greece. And so what I did, I went around to these older women and said, cough it up. How do you do it in your country? Tell me about it. So they're traditions. And, 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 and it pretty much it was the same thing. Nobody has, you know, the label or the right. it. It, it is out there and totally the last chapter in uh, when go speak yeah. is actually the workshop oh. uh, is the workbook for my workshop anybody that reads that chapter can do when it go speak okay yeah you don't even have to take the class just read that chapter and you can do it I was I was gonna go get it okay so third Thursday of each month we do the, a book okay book. well the third Thursday of each month you can catch Marianne up at the Strongsville borders borders right and what time does that start seven okay so seven o'clock and that's fun you know it to is. get everybody together we, get, and, we have and good books every month and we discuss them and we do talk about them so and discuss other other people's books right oh right okay. yeah no because you also like to club. write fiction and yeah <laughs> well, one of my new books come out. Of course, we discussed that one too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, huh. it, it, we, there's a list and which books we're reading. And I bet you that's a packed book club for you. There's huh? about 100 people there. Wow. Every month. So I guess yeah. you could go early and get a seat. S huh? Or bring. They have the coolest folding chairs now. You can bring like with canvas ones. People bring their own little wow. chairs to sit in. Okay, great. Yeah, because well, they don't have enough seats. I think. But so. yeah, yeah, it's fun. It, right. It's fun. Yeah. Well, good. Well, we, you know, that that's a way for people to get, you know, some information and, and um, just to, to talk, chat with you, you know, and hang out. So. Right, because we get through the book in about 20 minutes and then they have me cornered for another hour after <laughs> that. So it works out okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, most of the time, you know, you, find, you probably find yourself, people really are, um, you know, just curious about why you do this or maybe curious about what, what you know, um, what's out there maybe. Right. And, um, you know, and being the level of celebrity that you are, I would say, um, you know, you probably don't get a lot of peace and quiet, do you? I mean, as far as people bugging you all the time. You know, it's not so bad. That's good. It, it's, it's not bad. I, it's weird. Apparently, I, I have a very distinctive voice, which I thought my voice was like everybody else's. But people recognize my voice before they recognize mm. me. And I'll be walking through Bueller's, and I, I walk by, and some lady walked by, and, she, and I was talking to Ted, and she goes, my God, you're Marianne. I looked at her and I says, do I know you? She goes, no, I recognize your voice. I went, mm, yeah, well, you've okay. done quite a bit of radio. So yeah. <laughs> that's how you know that's me. Good, yeah. but it, it, it's fine. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's fun. It is. Well, now you still, now you have taken a break from going out and, and doing the, the not, not workshops, but doing house cleansing, or are you still doing, no, no, oh, no, you're still I'm busy. Still, oh, yeah, I'm still doing that. Okay, yeah, no, all no, right. No, no, still doing houses. Still doing houses. And you, your daughter also. Um, we have two daughters, two daughters and the okay. older one can't do it and wishes she could and the younger one can do it and wishes she didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it always is. But yeah, the younger one, um, and both the girls live out of state now, so they're not even around here. So, not even, so you're back to kind of on, on my own. own. Yeah, on, own. on my own. Yeah, it, it's okay. People are understanding. Um, it takes, it could take up to about three months for me to return a call and mm -hmm. then and once I call, you know, if that's their choice to have me come out, then 
it, it usually within two or three weeks, so it's not that bad. Now you're booked then, you say, a couple months ahead of time, or how far, how far ahead of, are you booked? Yeah, I'm booked about three weeks out. That's good. Like I says, I've yeah. got probably 400 calls to make back. Yeah. Now, do you find a majority of these, these calls, a majority are, are real hauntings or you know, not, yeah. or residual energy maybe, or just kind it's of It's interesting. Sure. Uh, 20 years ago, somebody called me up. And say 20 people called, 10 of those people only wanted to relate something that happened when they were a kid because they knew I wouldn't laugh at them. <coughs> because everybody's had some kind of paranormal experience growing up. The other five wanted something and didn't have anything, and then five of them actually had something. Mm. Now I get about 30 calls a day. And mm -hmm. Out of the 30 calls a day, 25 probably have something. My goodness. People are smarter now. Uh -huh. Everybody has knowledge now with all the paranormal shows, shows on, on TV. On TV. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Yeah, which, whatever. And, but, you know, even Ghost Whisper, there was only four sentences each week that were true. Yeah. The rest was all Hollywoodized. Yeah. You know, and, and I got so upset about it the first couple of months it was on and I would get a script every week and I sit there with the big red pencil going no a ghost doesn't walk through you no you can't walk through them no they can't throw your hair down a garbage disposer no they can't do this and I sit there on Friday night and watch it and they did it anyway oh. so the the big hotshot producer called one day it was right before Chris right before the Christmas break and I was really just not I was crappy because he asked me a question. I said, why are you asking me these questions? I said, you, don't, you do what you want anyway. And I said, and you don't understand. I said, five minutes after that show is off the air, I get 40 calls. Why did you let them do that? You told me a ghost couldn't do that. Oh. And now they're doing it. And why are Tata sticking out? because her tops were always low on the show. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, like I have anything to say about that either. So, and, and I told him this, and he says, well, as far as her tops being low, we've got the male 20 to 40 nailed. The tops are staying low. <laughs> okay. He says, the other half is, he said, this is entertainment. This is not a ghost documentary each week. Right. He said, get your head around it. He says, this is the way it's going to be. I said, but these people are calling me. He said, only in Ohio. <laughs> the other 49 states think this is the way it is. You live there, so that's where they know it's not true. I went, oh, good, OK. So, stirring up my, the hornet's nest in my backyard, yeah, thank you very that's much. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So, but. You know, it's, it's fine. It's, and, and he said, you want to get the truth out there, write a book. Mm -hmm. And that's why when Ghost Speak came about, because I got the truth out there. Or you do a TV show like this. That's right. Okay, and you get the truth let out the there. Truth out. This that's is right. about the truth. We're educating people. That's right. So uh, interesting that you say there are things that ghosts can do and not do. Oh, absolutely. Maybe, maybe you can count off some of the things they can do and some of the things they can't do. I would like to know because okay. I mean I think that's. Well, first I know of all, it's in your books, right. but I'm, a ghost can't kill you. Okay. I wouldn't be going in houses if I thought a ghost would kill me. But you can be running up a flight of steps, and they materialize on the top of the step and you lose your balance and you fall backwards and you die, but they didn't push you, okay? Uh -huh. They are a total energy drain. Abs yeah. I mean, adults, unexplained headaches when you're in the house, possibly lower intestinal problems, mm -hmm. and you, are, you can sleep eight hours straight, you wake up totally exhausted. You feel better when you're not home. Kids mm. under the age of 10 or 12, a lot of ear, nose, throat, and upper respiratory problems. Right. If the kid yeah. does not want to stay in their bedroom at night, there is a reason. Listen to your kids. Thank you they, for saying that. Because I have a lot of people that say, you know, my child, you know, is crying. My child doesn't want to sleep. And like, because there's, there's probably reason. something there. That's right. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's exactly <laughs> right. The other thing is they can move things. Paperwork, bills, keys. Um... You can look crazy all over the house for something, and you go back five minutes later, and there it is sitting on the table. Mm -hmm. An earthbound spirit does not eat or sleep. They need human energy to keep going. Right. If they can make you think you're crazy or get you to... I do more houses with divorce. 
because of ghosts than anything. That's true. They bring because they fight. Energy, yeah. Look at the energy that they're putting out. They're okay. sucking up on it. Yeah. So, but they can electrical anything electrical in a the house. They can mess with light bulbs, computers, cell phones, fax machines. Uh, man, they mess with plumbing and furnaces when they're alive. They still mess with them when they're dead. So you're <laughs> going to have problems with your hot water tank, problems with your furnace. Mm -hmm. They are really good at breaking the, the coupler, coupler, something on a furnace. I don't know what that's called. Yeah, the they, coupler for the, the gas furnace. Yeah, they, the... they can break that in a heartbeat. Wow, so, that's scary. Yeah, and if they ride with mm -hmm. you in the car, your, maybe your seatbelt dinger won't go off, or your radio won't work, or your windshield wipers, mm -hmm. or your little thing, you know, service, 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 when it really doesn't need service. This is things that they can do if they ride mm -hmm. with you. Wow. So... Disruptive. And you know, a ghost, I have never, ever found a house built on an Indian burial ground. <laughs> ever. Okay. <laughs> That's a big no-no in my book. And, but the other thing is, a ghost does not have to die or have her own that house. Okay. You know, you have a party and you mm -hmm. have six or seven couples over. One of those couples has a ghost attached to them. Mm -hmm. They walk into your house, the ghost goes, oh yeah, I like this house a whole lot better than where I'm living. <laughs> I'm going to stay here now. <laughs> Who's going to tell them they can't? Right. Nobody. So, it, it's, and then there's yeah. lines of work that have a tendency to bring a ghost home. People that work at emergency rooms, especially city hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Everybody's police nodding. officers. <laughs> Everybody's nodding, yeah. And not necessarily in a nice neighborhood, but like Cleveland or Shaker Heights or East Cleveland, yeah. you know, where there's rougher yeah. type of... of that the kind of stuff happening. that goes on, yeah. Right. Um, people that work in nursing homes. Right. Now, you see that patient five, six days a week. You're kind to that patient. Their rotten son visits them once a month. They die. Who are they going to go home with? You. You were nice to them. Yep. This isn't hard stuff. This is pretty easy right. stuff. Antique stores, garage sales. Man, that cake plate cost you 50 cents. What a bargain. So what about the old lady that's attached to it? <laughs> yeah, and I garage sale. Most people <laughs> do. <laughs> well, let me give you a hint if you garage sale second-hand stores, anything like that, carry in your car just a little bag of sea salt. Ah, anything sea salt. that you buy, sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on it before you put it in your okay. car. Cleanse it. Don't make it look like a beach. Right. A little bit goes a long way. <laughs> and about 65% of the time, if something's attached to that item you just bought, it'll knock off and it won't follow you. Ah, the sea salt. Because I, yeah. I tell some pe I tell people to take a sea salt bath. That's good, Like too. we work in nursing homes and nurses and stuff right. to kind of clean off. Just they, they, and they what else energy. works really good is if you have right by your back door a spritzer bottle with a couple tablespoons of sea salt in it, spritz the air and walk through it before you walk out the door. Well, that's a great idea. I, I, I didn't think about that. That's a good idea. It that's works. helpful household tents. That's right. Tips for to get rid of for Mary <laughs> and to get rid of the ghosts. So, oh, yeah, that's fabulous. Well, yeah. Great. Well, and I know that you've you've got we our audience is itching to ask questions. So, okay. Um, you know, I'm thinking with such a large studio audience that we've had. This is the largest studio audience we've had in oh, the whole year. We've reached our record. Yay! Yay. <laughs> and because of our guest. And uh, we're going to take a break. Um, and, uh, you know, then we'll go and have the studio audience and have the opportunity to ask you some questions. Good. And we've already gone over the parameters of what we can ask and not ask. And, and that's, that's great because I think that's a good... Thing to set up there, right in the beginning. Parameters, right there, and um, you know we can. Uh, then we'll we'll get to it. All right. Well, now this is the part where the studio audience gets to ask a question. So we've got a lot of eager people here. So we'll start right out. Okay. Hi, Marianne. Hi. Uh, my name is Stacy. Thanks for uh, coming today. Uh, my question is: What was your inspiration and the process for the cookbook? Like the process of getting recipes and everything. I did um, the Goulardi Fest, Time Warp, they do that once a year. Everybody that comes there is in that space. And 
Um, somebody came up to me, and Borders, I don't sell my own books, Borders was there selling my books, and the manager from this area of Borders was there selling, and some lady came up and said, I read one of your recipes about 10 years ago, another publication called me right after Christmas and said, I'm doing a cookbook, can you give me a recipe? I went, ah, no. And I says, hey, I just got a recipe this week from a ghost, you want that? She said, yeah, and so she put it in this book. Well, that woman happened to be at the Goulardi Fest and she said, after 10 years, she bought me a copy of the book. And so this Borders guy's listening to this and he says, what kind of recipe from a ghost? And I told him how it came about and what happened. And he said, you have more than one recipe? I said, yeah, yeah, actually I have a box full of recipes. He goes, that would be so terrific. And I start thinking about it. And uh, I called an editor that I knew and I got like three sentences out and he says, yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> and he says, but you have to have the manuscript to us by April 1st because it was coming out this September. So I worked, it's a good thing it was a long winter. But the first page is the hi, why, and why did they call, and who the ghost was, and then the second page is the recipe. Okay. So it, it's pretty cool. A lot of butter and back, bacon fat, let me tell you. <laughs> and I don't know how many of them you're gonna actually wanna cook, but it's sort of like fun and yum. You know, read the story and a yummy recipe that goes with it. Oh, thank you, interesting. Yeah. All right, well, we also were going to move right along. I guess, Marty, you have a question? <clears throat> yes, I was um, wondering something. What is a ghost compared to someone that's in your family that passed away and you feel is that they're, they're friendly towards you? They're, they've gone through to the life they had to have. You feel mm -hmm. like they have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, I, we have gotten a phone call from my father after he had died for, thir from, for 35 years, and, and he... Uh, a talk for three minutes and something seconds or whatever. Cool. And I knew it was him. We knew it was him because right. you could tell by the tone and everything. Sure. And the reference to it. But I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid of that at all. And I, I is that a, a ghost? Is that a spirit? What yeah. is this? You know, I think ghost, spirit, entity, I, I think it's the same name for a spirit. I mean, I think it just has a bunch of different names. If you dream of somebody that has died, that means they have crossed over. They are not earthbound. Oh. Now, say grandma died and you've never dreamt of her, but your sister has. As long as somebody has dreamt of grandma, she's where she's supposed to be. Now, spirits that crossed over come back and forth, visit all the time. They don't miss a holiday, a birthday, an anniversary, a baptism, a wedding. They are there. They are there. They're, they don't miss anything. And anybody that has infants, they know when they're reaching up and giggling and cooing that they're seeing grandma or grandpa or somebody. Now, they come in dreams because dreams are acceptable. You get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to go to the bathroom and you see grandma sitting on the foot of your bed, you're going to freak out. <laughs> but you have a dream of grandma tonight, you're going to get up in the morning and you're going to call your sister or your brother and you're going to go, gee, grandma looks so good, and so dreams are acceptable. The cool thing is when you smell maybe a certain cologne or a certain spice or uh, maybe a pipe tobacco, those are days they're usually visiting. And that's how you know they're there. So it, it, they're, they don't miss very much. They're there for everything. I, with Easter this past weekend, I bet everybody's house was full. <laughs> so. Right. I, I, I really feel comfortable with that. And um, how do you know if it's somebody that you don't want around? I've been pushed before. I have wind pushed me before. No, then that's them. probably an earthbound spirit. Just because you have one in the house doesn't mean you can't have the other in the house. Yeah. Okay. And this is Jason from the Ghost People, the plumber. Um, <laughs> people that get orbs in their pictures, perfectly round circles, those are pictures of spirits that have crossed over. You want orbs in pictures. 
they can be colored, they can be sparkly. And if there's a design in the middle of that orb, for sure that is a spirit that is crossed over and is visiting. And if it's blank in the middle, it's a dust particle. It's nothing. It just blowed off. Your animals, if you've got cats or dogs and they're looking toward the ceiling, those are people that are crossed over that are visiting. If they're looking eye level, then it's probably earthbound spirits in the house. Okay? Interesting. Information is great. Thank you. Well, you just answered my question. <laughs> okay! <laughs> I do have to ask because I have a cat that sits in the basement. He's only three, and he not, does nothing but cry at the corner. And he's constantly looking up, and, his, and I'll, I'll come and be as loud as ever and come up right behind him and scare him all, all day. But he'll be just sitting there meowing, so he's meowing at a... At somebody. Right. Now, I see spirits like I see you, but some people see shadow people where it's like a shadow. And I guess because they're dark colored, everybody assumes there's somebody bad. You know, not every cowboy that was a good guy had a white hat. Some of the good guys wore black hats too. Cisco Kid wore a black hat. But, that's never mind. So, just because you see dark shadows in your house does not mean that that's somebody bad that's in your house. Don't Try to think positive that there's somebody good in the house, not somebody that shouldn't be there. Okay, great. Well, we have another question here. <laughs> Marianne, do you ever find that um, earthbounds and ones that have crossed over interfere with each other? No, not at all. Okay. Because it's They're aware, and sometimes, like some people can see and talk to ghosts, some people that I run across in houses can, when they were alive, so they can do it when they're dead can see and talk to ghosts. Sometimes they actually have information on relatives that have crossed over that come through to visit. I couldn't tell them anything because I don't do that. You know, what I do is so narrow. People think that I can do so much and I really can't. But, you know, mediums, psychic mediums, those people really do a whole lot more than I can do. But, and they see the good ones, you know, so they see ones that crossed over and angels and saints and spirit guides and stuff. I don't see those. Mm. So it's, you know, and I used to think I wanted to, but oh no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is enough. <laughs> and do you find they can attach themselves to like homes that have been moved? Oh yes, they can. They can attach themselves to homes. They will move with homeowners, absolutely. And again, you know, who's going to stop them? Nobody. I was on the radio, I don't know what show, and somebody called and said, did they have a ghost in the house? And I said, yeah, you do. You have two. One's on the first floor and one's on the second floor. And that was that. And it was about six weeks later, this gal called, and she says, do I still have any ghosts in the house? I says, yeah, you got one on the first floor and one on the second floor. They were down the basement. She goes, oh, okay. She called like three weeks later. She says, do I still have a ghost in the house? I says, what are you doing? Are you trying to do something to get rid of them? What? She goes, no. And I says, yeah, you got a ghost on the first floor and you got a ghost in the basement. She goes, well, I think that ghost in the basement's bothering my husband, she says, because every time he goes downstairs to shower, he's got the kids sitting on the steps. He's afraid to go down. And I said, okay. And she says, but you know, I'm not going to do anything about it. And I said, all right. Now, <laughs> my phone, and, and, I, and I say this nicely, my weird line, even though it's my work line, but I don't hear it ring after 10 o'clock at night because what could I do for somebody at 2 o'clock in the morning because it'd be really ugly. So, and it comes back on, it rings again at 8 o'clock in the morning. But I always check before we go to bed at 11 to see if anybody called because I go to so many funerals. I probably go to 15 funerals a month. And so we went to bed, and it was Saturday night and Sunday morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, ring, ring. 5 after 8, ring, ring. 10 after 8, ring, ring. Ted said, oh, somebody wants you. So I got out of bed, went into the office, waited. The phone rang. I picked it up. She said, thank God you're home. Where have you been? I've been trying to call you all night. I said, hmm, what's wrong? She goes, well, 
she said, and I didn't know this before, but it was that lady who wasn't going to do anything. Uh, she says, my husband's a long haul truck driver, but he comes home on Friday nights. And she says at 11 o'clock, they have the news on. As soon as the news starts, they get up, they walk through the dining room, make a turn into the kitchen, get cookies and milk, and come back to watch the news. Well, they had a Doberman, and the dog was sleeping in the center of the living room floor. Now, if you have a dog and you stand up, the dog's going to lift up its head and plop its head right back down, okay? When, when they came back through the dining room holding their cookies and milk, the Doberman was standing up, and her front legs were on the floor, and her ears were back on her head, and and her back legs were in the air doing a bicycle. So they freaked out and called me. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you have taken your truck driver husband and your 2.5 kids and your dog and left? <clears throat> no, they called me all night instead. <laughs> so she says, well, are you coming out? And I went, oh, no, you want me to come out. <laughs> <laughs> but they can get, a ghost can get your attention if it wants to. And that is one way that this particular ghost did. Say so. Wow, interesting. All right, and you have a question for Marianne. Yeah. Marianne, my name is Vicki. Um, my parents died three years of each other. Okay. And since my mom died in 99, my dad died in 96, my brother and my sister and myself, our house number was 716 in the house that we grew up with in. We see that number all the time on all the clocks, in the car, on the microwave. Those are days that they're just around you. And that's their little way of getting that to you. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing when you find, you know, everybody used to find pennies. Now it's nickels, dimes, and quarters. I guess inflation has gotten everybody. <laughs> <laughs> There's a trick to that, though. When you find a coin, if it's heads up, it's yours. Look at the date. See, is that the year somebody died or the year somebody was born? Who's trying to get a message to you that they're okay? If you find the coin and it's tails up, turn it over and leave it for the next person. It's not yours. Okay? Wow. okay? Um, my niece, when she was in college in Arizona, uh, I think this was a dream, but she had a vivid dream where my parents, it would be her grandparents, came and spoke with her through the dream. I mean, it was quite a long conversation. They were standing in her kitchen counter. Mm -hmm. She had a cat there. My dad was playing with the cat, petting the cat, and they were just telling her how proud they were of her because she was going on for her masters and, you know, the rest of the family. And she got up and went to the bathroom, came back to bed, and they just picked up the conversation where Perfect. they left off. Anybody can talk to their loved ones in dreams. Everybody can do that. The first time you have a dream of somebody that's died, the next night before you fall asleep, say, if I dream of mom tonight, I'm going to talk to her. If I dream of mom tonight, I'm going to talk to her. Just keep repeating that. The next time you have a dream of somebody like that, you can have a conversation with them just like we're having right now. People will say, oh, I don't have dreams. Everybody has dreams. You don't remember your dreams. If people work weird shifts, there are some meds that people take that prevent you from remembering your dreams. Get an herb called mugwort, M-U-G-W-O-R-T. Make a pouch out of it, put it between your pillowcase and your pillow, and in about three weeks you will start remembering your dreams. They say you can smoke and drink it too, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> but you can definitely sleep on it, it well, does work. Yes, Mary Ann. I was wondering, what was the scariest house you ever had to clear? Scariest? Um, there was a house, and the picture is actually in the book of the ghost behind the car. That ghost was actually used in uh, Satanism, black witchcraft. It was an entity that the person that was doing that stuff called on that type of uh, energy to help them. And so that was probably the scariest one I ever did. And that one actually flipped an axe in front of me, a red-handled axe. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, it went pss, 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 right in front of me, hit the 
concrete floor in the garage slid into a fiberglass garage door and it was boom and I'm going what am I doing here <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then but but and then he said he was gonna go the light and so I made the light and in that particular picture that's in the book I was I actually took that picture and there were two ghosts sitting in the front seat of that car that I was trying to get their picture but I ended up getting the bad ones picture also and he walked to that light and just before he got to that light he veered off and went he never did go into the light the house was protected so I knew he could never get back in again and I keep thinking someday I'm probably gonna run across him again but I <laughs> never have but that was probably the scariest but you know if I've run across five really scary ones in over how many years doing this, you know, it's the movies, it's TV, it's just not scary like that. People like to be scared. Well, terrific. Well, I think that uh, covers all of our, whoa. We, okay, we do have a question. <laughs> I, sorry, whoops. No, I'm sorry. A person behind me. You mentioned something about working with the police. Mm -hmm. And what capacity do you do? How, do you do that? The only way that I can help any law enforcement agency is if I can talk to the victim. I'm not a psychic. I need to talk to the victim. And cops and, and law enforcement agencies across the United States, the FBI, the state police, the sheriffs, the army, the marines, they've all gotten pretty smart. They know that as soon as they find a body, that's when they need to call me in because everybody attends their funeral. So I'm going to be able to usually catch them at the funeral. Okay, say like with well, a well-known one, Stacey Peterson. Okay, I mean, just the top of my head. Like, so if you would have to go to the funeral to find, actually find out what happened. Yeah, now a lot of people don't cross over when they die. That's the reason they don't. They want justice or they have young kids or they won't leave for that reason. So sometimes I can find them wherever their kids are or in a relative's house, but it's a matter of seeking and finding them then because they're not, they are not on the side of the road where there's a pile of crosses and flowers. Who are they gonna get energy from? They're going to be in somebody's house. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I think now <laughs> we're done with the question portion of the show. Well, we've finished up our question answering segment, and we um, are so grateful, Marianne, to have you on. And this is uh, someone in the audience uh, supplied the book for us to show. So this is one of her books, and again, available when ghosts speak, and it has pictures in it, and it's a fabulous book. So you can go out to any um, you know bookstore or online and get this book. And, and again, Mary Ann Winkowski, and she has her website that you can go to and uh, get more information about her workshops and fundraisers and other things that she's doing upcoming. So, um, and we, we're so grateful to have you on our show, our, our humble little Psychic Sushi Brunswick area television show. Oh, this and is we very appreciate good. it. Very great good. audience. Yeah, I clapped well, all you. And so, so, ah, so what we can do is you can go, if you'd like to be in our studio audience, which was, we have like 20 people. And so if you want to be in our studio audience, you can go to my website, www.elizabethhowell.com. And you can email me and just, you know, we tell you when to come down uh, when we tape. We tape twice a month, so you can come down and be part of our studio audience. And you can enjoy in the studio audience, if you come in and be in the studio audience, you can enjoy guests like Mary Ann. Did I spit that out? You did. You I did fine. <laughs> So it it's worked. An, it did work a it little worked. bit. So again, Marianne, thank you so thank much. You. And again, this has been Psychic Sushi.